Okay, so Chef Jane, while the pigs in a blanket are, are in the little oven here cooking, before we started filming tonight, you and I sat down, because you're not really that familiar with navigating your way around YouTube and responding to comments, so Chef Jane and I sat down for about five minutes. I showed her um, how to navigate around YouTube and how to be able to respond to comments and view her own videos. And we were looking at some of the comments on your first video and somebody left a comment asking you in your next video if you would please cook wearing nothing but this, An little, apron. this little black apron. Is that something you would be amenable to doing? Um, in a future episode. I'm perhaps. not going to do a nude party, perhaps. but I would consider just like a little t-shirt. Like a little sexy t-shirt to show that I'm in my own intimate kitchen cooking what I love. And not only what I love, but the way that I love how I present things. And I present things natural too. So, um, per request... If there's more than, um, you know, a half a dozen bites of this, you know, hey, let's see you the way you are. Uh, I'm not going to put on any kind of culinary strip show, but I'll get down to the nitty gritty a little mm -hmm. bit and just uh, being more au naturel. And I appreciate that, guys. But I do really, really want to take your your needs your desires your dreams your requests on like for dishes you'd like me to make so please make a comment on my list please tell me what you're wanting to learn how to do or learn how to watch and i'll be more than happy to accommodate you that's great i really appreciate it but i need it. to explain to you that these babies the piggies in the blanket really need to cook throughout, not just the dough, but the meat, because you don't want anything unsafe. And they needed to be um, in your oven, in your toaster oven. They need to cook for about three to five minutes. And also, let me express to you convenience-wise level tonight, what I am producing Mostly everything that I made to show you in this cooking segment is cookable in three to five minutes. You're melting, you're uh, cooking it, you're getting it hot, and then of course presenting it, you know, on a platter and cutting it, and then of course making a nice presentation with your dipping sauces and how you make it to your company which is really important because that's the appeasing appetizing sense of it but keep in mind what we made here is a little prep it's quite easy quite home remedy um, down-to-earth cooking not involved causing of cooking, but just putting together some really nice, simple ingredients for an appetizer tailgating and party. What we're going to do, I've made them in my little <clears throat> confection oven broiler, you know, toaster oven, and they're all nice and golden brown on each side, so they're nicely cooked and ready prepped to eat. So you pin, 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 toothpick them, pin fork them, so that they're grabbable, you know, individually for someone to grab off your platter. And then we're going to transfer them onto the platter. And of course, the way you lay them out is a nice presentation of how you're going to introduce them to your guests. So, this is your second appetizer. Remember, the first is your Asian meatballs and pigs in the blanket. And now we're going to go to the third appetizer for the evening. And 
that's involving a nice simple chicken breast skinless boneless you can buy them in the store boneless <clears throat> just take the skin off cut the skin off and nicely place them in a dish with a little flour dredge them in a little flour saute them very simply in a little olive oil your seasoning of your choice I used oregano in this instance because that's the Italian flair of this so I made an Italian appetizer and <clears throat> then I draped over their marinara sauce and your mixture of cheeses Asiago Parmesan and Reggiano so uh, grated fresh cheese or you can buy just a little container of cheese that's all mixed for you. See? And see how nice and succulent and juicy the meat is, along with the breading. Succulent, where have I heard that word in this kitchen before? Everything is succulent. We, uh, Jason. I vaguely Jason. remember someone saying that word over and over in a previous video. I can't remember who it was. Oh my golly, my sous chef Jason, that's all he lives on is succulent between taste. He's a foodie. And when you are a foodie, that's what you expect is delicious, succulent, and also very enabling to the body, nutrient-wise, consumption-wise, and you're just a happy camper. But please don't become a couch potato with this food. Please eat it wisely and healthy-wise. Jane, have you ever had your house checked for paranormal activity of any kind? Something really spooky just happened I think I need to make you aware of. No. I turned around for a second, and the picture of Jason that was on the microwave oven is gone. And now that you've plated all the food on the platter, I turned around, oh and the, pic golly, the picture freak. of Jason just appeared right next to the platter of food. And I'm holding a red towel, so I don't know if, kind of like this time of the year, where Halloween is coming, if there's like a, a little bit of a rascal is involved in this, but I know that this paranoism act is, Jason is very active here. He's vibrating all over this food area. I mean, like, like man, it, 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 it's intuition that we feel Jason's presence I think they, they should film the next paranormal act, uh, activity movie at your house, I think. Because I'm a little creeped out. I don't know if I can keep filming here. I'm a little spooked. This thing just moved all by itself from the microwave as soon as we plattered up the food, right next to the food. Unbelievable. Well, I don't know. He's, that's what he's into, Mr. Food. Jane, I've already stolen three meatballs. They're absolutely delicious. Tell us about these sauces. Okay, guys, fantastic. We're at the end product of our results. And it seems like, oh my golly, how long did it take me? But honestly, for me to prepare this, even though I'm a little more in the groove of this, but a typical person, it's like maybe a whole, oh, in, in, at whole with these three appetizers, prep time if you had the right ingredients between the beef and the chicken breast and the doggies um, and, and really super great ingredients uh, would take you no more than 30 minutes to prep. And what's 30 minutes of your time to enjoy a really great get together? So the get together at the end result is all of the cooked end result. But I want to show you that's really super important for the tasty part of all the goodies. Goes quick, goes fast, everyone grabs, but that's what makes the clinch of the whole effect. 
You've got three dipping sauces here, three appetizers. These are super important to make the game work, make everyone content and happy. Your meatballs, which I've toothpicked everything on a platter, your meatballs, sprinkled garnish is, is Asian style with sesame seeds. And this is your sesame seed Asian teriyaki sauce. Very simple teriyaki sauce with a little added soy sauce and honey. Mwah. Fantastic. Ay, 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 ay. The Chinese women going across the San Francisco Bridge would wink at you flying by from one direction to the other, north and south. No problem. And then your second is your piggies in the blanket, which are excellently cooked top to bottom, caramelized and all roasted and nice and bite right into with a wonderful honey mustard sauce. Simple yellow honey, I mean simple yellow mustard, Dijon mustard, you could add a little kick to it with a little spice, but I just use it, used regular golden honey with honey mustard mixed together. So yellow honey, yellow, the clover honey, and the yellow mustard. Boom! And dip right into that with the doggies. Then your next sauce in your little ramekins, you want to serve them nice, make a nice presentation. These little crock ramekins is your marinara sauce for your chicken parmesan tippets. And all you do is dip the piece of the chicken right into the sauce. Don't mind. Why don't we try this? Don't mind if I do, Chef Jane. All right. Very simple. Succulent. And you can always address the end product with a little shaved Parmesan cheese to make it a little extra zingy. But those are that is your three sauces to go. They're accompaniments. People may eat them. People may grab them. But a dipping sauce is always a fantastic touch. And you know what? I remain peacefully, blissfully, great hands on what I made for you all tonight and worked hard on all of this. Hope you enjoy all of this as much as we got involved with all this great occasion and I wish for, oh my God, succulent the next time, better and better and better. All right. Peace be out. I say to you, Chef Jane, next time, adioso. Jane, before we part ways tonight, I have to say one thing. Unless you want Brad to start becoming your cameraman here, I'm afraid I'm going to need you to ditch the MSNBC hat and get yourself a Fox News hat. What do you think about that, Chef? Go for it all the way. I'm a fox, so I like foxy. So supply me a foxy hat, no problem. And to answer some people's questions, yeah, what are your dogs doing? There's a little hanky-panky going on over here. Um, to answer some people's questions, yes, we are going to be bringing some guests over to Jane's Kitchen. Lenny will be making an appearance in here. Brad will be making an appearance in here. We need to sort out some type of a food challenge you can prepare for Nate, maybe even Nate versus Lenny in Jane's Kitchen. Oh, there's going to be a what combo. What do you think about that? There's going to be a combo of some um, endearing, old-time favorite people. Everybody's on board. so we're... I'm expecting the misfits and the outcast misfits, too. You are a misfit, Jane. You're one of us. All right. Right on. Where's Tarzan? Where's Tarzan? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Peace be out. Love you all. Thank you.